Let's be real. Getting out of bed at 5.30 in the morning is brutal enough without having flat, dull coffee. So with that in mind, I went to buy the Gevy Milk Frother from Amazon. I wanted something thick and creamy, and I've tried the stick blender. It doesn't work. I've tried the Magic Bullet Mini. It doesn't froth the cream. It does other great things, but it doesn't froth my cream. Also, I didn't want to have to stand there and do it. I wanted something to do it for me while I do other stuff. So let's unbox this guy and see what's in here and how it's going to work. So, okay, this is what's coming in the box. I think, oh, here's our instruction manual, handy dandy instruction manual. We'll go through this. Of course, we have to read that before we can ever use it. Here is the machine itself. Let's see what's here. Okay, I got the black one. You can also have a white one if you like. Um, apparently there's function levels. Milk hot foam, heat chocolate, heat milk, cold milk foam. So you have some options there. It's a fairly sturdy plastic thing. Inside looks like some kind of a non-stick finish. And there's a some kind of a pin there. Okay, let's see. We don't have any. There's a prong here for the heating element or something. So let's see where that is. Looks like we're going to have to actually clean the the cup mechanism and not ever immerse this in water. That's what I'm seeing here. And what's this? Okay. Aha, this has a cord on it. I can feel the cord. Okay, so this is the heating element. It looks pretty cheap and plasticky. There's a pin here that's gonna accept that prong. Let's see. Yep, okay. That seems to work. And we're gonna do this. And what else is oh, okay. One more thing. The frothing paddle. Okay. We're going to hear a DAW sound. Let's see about that. DAW, I guess that's a DAW sound. It snapped in nicely. Very easy, very intuitive. Can you see that? Okay, let's wash this thing up and we'll show you how we do that. Okay, let's remove the coffee cup and let's put in some warm soapy water and let's clean this guy. We're gonna, we're gonna plug it in. That's done, I think, okay. We're gonna pour some soapy water in here to the fill line, which is right, don't know if you can see it or not, but the max fill line is right about here. There's also a smaller, there's a, if you want less milk, there's one here and there's one here. So I guess half a cup and a cup. So let's pour the pre-mixed soapy water in. It says don't fill above that line. So it'll damage the machine. So we're not gonna do that. I put this on and let's turn it on. It's, oh, okay. <laughs> oh boy, okay. And so here's, Hot milk foam, heat chocolate, heat milk, mix. I, I guess we'll just do, um, I don't care, I guess I guess any will do. Let's just do that one and see what happens. Okay, I can feel it running. Can you hear it? You can see it. And we're gonna have too much foam there in a hurry. So there we go, we've mixed it. It does seem to froth well. So let's say that's clean and we're gonna dump that. Don't drink this, this is like Dawn dishwashing detergent. You don't want to put that in your coffee. But the foam is great. <laughs> Let's go dump this and see what happens. Okay, so I took it to the sink and gave it a rinse out. Um, just gonna dry it off now. Getting ready to put our cream in. I would give a caution on rinsing it uh, after you do your milk. Don't get any water in this part. That's kind of a drawback. Okay, there we've rinsed that out. I'm gonna set it back on the unit. Okay, and cleaning it, I would also note that there is a gasket here that you may need to at some point peel off and wash 
so that it doesn't get some kind of contaminant in your see it's getting water under it so it got really soaked just rinsing it so this is going to get milk under it i'm sure so you're going to probably need to remove that and wash it and so that you can see what's going on i'm going to peel this label off so you can see the milk frothing and there's a yeah there it is so let's peel this guy off it has cleaning instructions on it so i'm going to try to take this guy and put it right here so we can see it later there we go yeah we'll have that with us okay so we have a whole gamut of milks here that we're going to test we wanted to test some of these thinner ones like the oat milk um, because we don't know how they're going to froth up and they you know they're not exactly as good as regular milk so we really wanted to see if it would improve their thickness and all we've got some lactose free milk we've got some fat free half and half we've got some goat milk here by the oat milk we just took off the G and then we've got some half and half so let's see how these guys stack up and how it does it these two we actually bought by mistake because if you see we have a whole range of purples here so we got a little confused at which one we were buying but we're gonna see how they froth so we just wanted to give you a quick run through of the different various milks this is the thinnest one this oat milk it's kind of the consistency of water so I wanted to see if the, the Gevi could handle it uh, we're just going to go by milk and thickness and see what this machine will do for us. As you can see, this is extremely thin. And it's a great substitute for milk. The ingredient panel is very natural. Water, sugar, oats, natural flavors. So it's super natural, but it's really thin and doesn't quite taste like regular milk. So let's put just a little bit in here and see how it goes. We're just going to fill a little right there. So that wasn't enough. We're going to at least get it a, to the paddle. We've got to cover the paddle, apparently. OK, so we're going to have a lot of milk to drink today. <coughs> Let's cover all of it. OK. I just got the top nib sticking out still a little bit. If you can see in there, there's just a little. OK, let's cover it and let's do the heat and froth. So we're going to turn it on, function, here we go. Let's see what the Gevi can do. It's very quiet. I like this feature very well because I can leave it on here to heat and to froth and I can go off and I can log into work or I can do my own thing as I need to. So that's a very handy thing. As you can see, it's beginning to condense on top. You can feel it heating up a little bit. This takes a lot of the effort out of it because with a stick blender, you're just standing there trying to turn it yourself and that's, that's for the birds. Okay, it's quit. Let's see what we got. It thinks it's finished. It, I can tell it's warm. Hmm. Okay, let's, it still looks really, really thin. Let's pour it into a cup and see what we've got. Okay, let's pour it up and see what we've got. It's very thin. It doesn't look like it did much. So we'll rinse it and move to the next milk. Okay, so we discovered there is a minimum fill line and the milked oats just didn't really do anything. So it didn't thicken it at all. It just heated it. So next we're going to try cold froth since we're going to have a lot of milk to the minimum fill line, which is going to be about to here in this little bowl. These are the, I'm not sure, we got these at Walmart and it apparently is still wet. Whoops. <laughs> Let me dry that. Production hazards. Okay, let's try whole milk and see what we can get out of that because I think it's also going to be thin. Let's see if it does anything. Take it over to uh, cold froth and go. And there we are. It does appear to be frothing it. The volume's getting a lot more. This looks promising. 
three hours later. Okay, let's see how this one did. I think they, I think it's much better. It looks nice and thick and creamy. Let's go here. I'm gonna try to be neat. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. That is lovely. Okay. So with whole milk, it works. Okay, since we made our coffee, the froth was gone down significantly, but it did it. Well, see, it's all kind of, but it did a good job frothing. You just need to use it in a timely manner. But see, look at that. And if you get skilled, we can do the barista art. We can add hearts or something. That's probably going to be for another video. Right now, we don't have that skill. But there you go. There's your beautiful frothed coffee. Okay, so we bought half fat-free half and half by mistake. But whoever needs this, 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 this segment is for you. It is very rich and creamy, as you'll see. I already poured it into the container, but it does have a rich and creamy mouthfeel, and it feels quite a bit like half and half. It tastes pretty good. Let's go ahead and see how it spins in the Gevi. Let's do cold, and it's going to take about two minutes. It's already thickening up nicely. It's putting that air in it to give it extra volume and loft. So looks like it's doing its thing. We've tried to proceed in the thinnest milks to the thickest milks. Looks like an eye. <laughs> okay, so here's the fat-free half and half. We're gonna pour it up. Looks kind of thin looks rather like it yeah this isn't going to be that helpful it looks like if there's no fat content in the milk it's not going to do a good job so that was a bust so now goat milk's up for the challenge i like to sh it says shake well I like to give it a good shake we're going to pour this guy in here and let's see how goat milk does for this one i'm going to do it on warm because i will drink this it's my own personal favorite how we do right there let's go it looks like it's frothing up pretty well right now let's see how it did and pour it in the cup oh this looks good this looks really good this looks like it has enough milk fat in it to um, really make some difference here in the pour let's switch this over a little bit so you can see it yes that's beautiful Wow that's why I use the goat milk because it actually has enough milk fat in it to be thick and rich and lovely. Let's give it a taste. I'll tell you how it did. Mm-hmm. It's good. I like it. Okay, this is a good one and uh, I like it. It still tastes like goat milk. People ask me how it tastes. I think it has a clean taste, but some people will hate it. But it's worth a try if you can't have regular milk. Next up on the agenda is our lactose-free milk. So all it looks like they've done is added lactase enzyme to it. So that's... We bought it as a mistake because, you know, you can see they're all purple. But yeah. Anyway, uh, they've just added lactase in here to an enzyme, and so let's see how this one froths up. It's regular cream. It should be the same. I'm going to try to be coordinated and not make a mess on the mat. There we go. Let's give this a pour. And let's froth it. So the lactose-free half and half, looks like it did very, very well. Yes, it's a beautiful pour. Look at that froth. That's going to make you a nice cappuccino right there. It tastes good. Yes, that's a, that's a winner. And let's do the last one, which is regular half and half, and we'll let you know about that. So we saved the best cream for the last of the milks. After this, though, there's a bonus. We're going to froth some egg whites and some eggnog since it's holiday season. And we're going to show you a lot of people want to make their um, keto bread. So we thought frothing egg whites would be nice. But this is just our traditional half and half. And we're going to get that going here. This should be really tasty. We did notice that like when we've ordered cappuccino before in a restaurant, 
the froth does last longer in those cups. We thought maybe if we froth it twice, it could work, but it does make a good froth. It just goes away fast. So let's pour this guy in for the full half and half. We didn't do whipping cream, but obviously it's gonna do an amazing job with that. <laughs> so let's choose our function. Let's get this heated up and let's go. Just the full, full fat, half and half with an alarming three and a half grams of fat per tablespoon. No, no, two tablespoons. Oh, that's better. Okay, we have a cup of coffee here at the ready, just standing by. Nice, strong, instant coffee. Just as a bonus, this is our favorite. It's really delicious right out of the jar. No effort. We have a lot of other coffee. We have ground coffee, we have Colombian, all this stuff, but instant is really good. And of course you can't make your Dalgona coffee unless you have instant coffee. Now we're through and there we go. Let's see if we can be in any way artistic with this. Nope. And while it's nice for that cup, this cup also wants some. It doesn't want to be left out at all. This is beautiful. Yeah, it's really, really good. Look at the thick, rich film on that. Look at that. Yum. Yep, it's good. That is nice. Okay. Let's try it. Give it a little stir. Look at that. I would make a heart, but yeah, it's not gonna happen. Mm. Mm hmm. That's quite decadent. And so now let's froth some eggnog for some holiday cheer. Let's see how this does. We're gonna cold froth it because I don't know if anyone really wants hot eggnog. Not sure about that. So let's put the cap on and let's give this delicious stuff a swirl. This sweet elixir of holiday cheer. This does not have any alcohol in it, by the way. Function and let's go to cold. You can do what you want, but I don't think I'd froth the, the spirits. Here we go. A cold froth is on the way. This should have enough milk fat, I'm thinking, to make it work. Whether air froth is a benefit in eggnog or not, I don't know. Bird's eye view. The photo bomber himself. He's a little deaf, but he always comes if there's a chance of food. rich frothed eggnog look at that thick and rich and lovely I think that'll make somebody happy yep that's good and one more treat for those of you who have stayed to the very bitter end of this video many of you may be doing keto and if you're trying to make your low-carb bread it frequently calls for frothed egg whites so let's see if this guy will froth the egg whites so you don't have to go to so much work. So as a bonus for you keto guys, let's try to froth some egg whites for your cloud bread or your 90 minute, 90 second keto bread. Let's see how this does. After using eggs in it, I would definitely wash it well. Although these have been pasteurized, I think. And let's do a cold froth. Here we go. Looks like it's doing it. So you could maybe even make your 
angel food cake, your keto bread, whatever you want to do with this one. If you're into the fancy baking, this could come in quite handy. I'm curious to see if it's going to form stiff peaks, but let's see what it does. It looks like it's forming peaks in it. That looks interesting. I thought I would do a lot of the whipping for you, but I didn't think it would do this much. Let's see how it did. It looks like it's actually formed stiff peaks. Yes, it has. It's formed stiff peaks. So if you were making your 90 second carb bread or your cloud bread, this would be perfect. Or even meringue shells. So for some of your holiday baking, uh, this would be interesting. There is a little liquid in the bottom, but yeah, it did a good job with no effort. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Stiff peaked egg white meringue. This could have great implications if you're trying to do a souffle. Look at that. So, okay, our meringue shells or anything. So, okay, that's cool. Nice. Okay, so in conclusion, after we tested all the milks, we found that the ones with almost no fat content didn't whip as well as the ones on this side with fat content, with the exception of the cage-free egg whites. They did great. So um, do it with fat. The only thing I would say is that the frother doesn't last long. Can you see that the egg whites are separating now? So if you're ready to go, it's a good deal. Um, also, if you drink your coffee quickly, but if you're gonna do it after time it doesn't seem to last as long as the barista coffee frother so maybe it's just not powerful enough or maybe you need to do it twice but that's that's our findings it's it's decent if for what you want um, we may get another one and review it also and see how they could the two compare but that's it and if you enjoyed this video thank you please like and subscribe and we appreciate you watching